To remain updated with the latest business news, click on the bell icon. Gentlemen, great to have you with us. Thanks so much uh, for joining us on Business Day. What a fabulous response we're seeing to this IPO. Uh, would love for our viewers to get to know a little bit more about what you have in store. Uh, clearly, you know, you have quite a strong position in this space in the market. I mean, I've been tracking your journey now for several, several years. Uh, tell us a little bit more about, uh, you know, fundamentally where the company stands right now. You are profitable. Uh, the journey so far, and also what your vision is for Map My India going forward. Uh, thanks a lot for having us on the show. We are India's leader in digital advanced digital maps, geospatial software, and location-based IoT technologies. We are focused on the B two B and B two B two C market, delivering our maps as a service, our software as a service, and our APIs, what is known as platform as a service across industry verticals, be it consumer tech, enterprise, automotive, or mobility customers. Um, and, and we have marquee names as our customers. Uh, the business actually has been growing well, as you said. We are highly profitable. Our order bookings have grown 3.3 times, and our revenue has also been growing well. Uh, uh, so I'm happy to kind of take more questions as you as you guide. Absolutely, clearly, you know, the digital, um boom that we're seeing is is only going to uh, you know accelerate uh, some of your plans going forward as well what is the kind of opportunity that you see here in india the total addressable market that frost and sullivan says by 2025 is 47000 crores for our uh, for where map uh, in the b2b and b2b2c space where map india is the market leader and whether you look at enterprises looking to digitally transform or the consumer app wave that is growing rapidly, or automotive where technology is being used, or mobility sector. Uh, all of these are requiring maps and location to power and upgrade enterprises, consumer apps, cars or vehicles, and the mobility and logistics sector. So it's becoming increasingly more important. And even the government has put a very strong uh, lens on the power of geospatial to power the next decade of governance and transformation for the entire country. So there, there must be significant barriers of entry, of course, to a business like yours. Are there, uh, you know, you know, major competitors in this space? Uh, do you see it getting busier, or would you say that you have an advantage of a natural advantage of being the leader uh, in the past right now? Well, the leadership has not just come for free. Uh, it has, we have worked for it and the, the work has been building the uh, world class India's best product. I mean, there are two, le uh, two competitors and they are, they are world leader in themselves, but not for India. And those are here and TomTom Tom, who have uh, had contracts worldwide with almost all the automotive companies. Uh, and still they probably have for the uh, Western world. But in India, since 2008, one after the other, because of the better quality product, the, uh, the, their contracts kept getting uh, cancelled. And in India today, almost you name any automotive companies, we are the uh, vendor of their choice or part. And it is not just stopping there because it has happened. Going forward also, the technology, Technology they have we have brought in what we call it N case navigation connected services uh, ADAS autonomous uh, safety and electric mobility. Now this is how we have been innovating, innovating looking at the customers' future needs, and that's the reason why we are the market leader in India. Absolutely. Uh, shareholders, and while a lot of this is already in the prospectus, uh, in terms of the shareholding and in terms of, uh, uh, you know, what's likely to change post uh, this issue? Yeah. See, the, the shareholding, pre-listing, and post-listing, there's an offer for sale of almost 18.9%. Yes. Okay. Uh, post-listing, uh, uh, promoters are going to hold 53%. Phone pay will be holding 19%. Zenden will be holding 6%. That makes it almost like 75%, 78%. And 19% is offer on sale. That's, that's going to be the post-listing uh, post shareholding. 
So in terms of uh, further looking at possible avenues for revenue, I know you've talked a lot about, uh, you know, upselling, cross-selling, and, and so on and so forth. But just because we're already seeing such premium uh, valuation and such a wonderful response, that's true from the retail segment as well. So clearly it's a business that customers or, or retail investors are responding to. Um, are you rethinking some of the, the possibilities going forward, just given that now there'll be so much pressure to deliver quarter on quarter? See, uh, like I said, uh, you know, we've been generating cash 80 crores last year from operations. Okay. We're sitting on 380 crores of cash uh, this year. The addressable market is quite large, both in India as well as potentially internationally, where we have created a global geospatial solution suite. So we are excited about telling more and more customers about all the different use cases where they can use Map by India, our maps, our software, our APIs, uh, and also expanding to international markets in future. But the India opportunity is, itself is quite, uh, is quite strong and uh, we have marquee names as our customers. So uh, we are focused on executing quarter on quarter, month on month, week on week, but with the innovation for the long term as well, so that we can drive future growth, uh, and, and we look forward to performing, uh, uh, you know, uh, for the new incoming shareholders. Okay, and in terms of major segments of growth, and uh, you know, where your clients are largely, uh, uh, you know, which which concentrated in in terms of industry, what would those be? Any risks that you see? Uh, you know, potentially, given that we're still not completely in the clear from, uh, you know, from the COVID hit. Uh, one statement I'll make. See, one of the growing, very fast growing area is are the companies which are the new age technology companies. Okay. And these new age technology companies are well diversified amongst almost every industry. Whether you take it in the space of e-commerce or whether you take, I mean, when I say e-commerce means retail. So yeah. the new age technologies company have come there or delivery or fintech. So the interesting thing is, I look at it in three ways. New age technologies for all the industries, the existing leaders in those industries who are adopting the new technology, and then the third is who might be the laggard. So the first two are our prime customers. So we are pretty much you know, diversified in terms of the risk of who the customer would be. So that's why we have 500 odd customers. And your the primary reason for raising funds, what will they be allocated towards? So basically, uh, we are highly cash generating, highly profitable. Yeah. Uh, the idea is to go, pub to go public is to do an offer for sale of 18.9%. Yeah. And we, based on the cash that we have, 380 crores, uh, and the ability to access public markets in future, as we don't just look at organic growth, but in future, we'll also look at inorganic growth. So the idea is to give an entry point for the investors and for ourselves into the public markets, and then to address this large opportunity in the long term, where we are well positioned, we will look at inorganic as well as organic growth opportunities. Very exciting. All the best. Uh, to you. Thanks for your time. We look forward to uh, uh, you know seeing what happens uh, and the listing as well. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Abha. <laughs> if you like the video, do like, comment, share, and subscribe.